Hey guys, welcome back to episode 4, Luke here again, and today we're going to be looking at the uh, token utility, which is definitely a big topic within the crypto space, and a lot of projects struggle to get the, uh, the right balance of token utility. So I'm not going to waste much time, I'm just going to dive straight in, and I think first of all, it's pretty important to talk about uh, the supply and the metrics for the token. So Quant is an ERC20 token, however they are agnostic, which means Really, the token could float on any chain that's suitable. The uh, the team just chose Ethereum because it had the most usage and development at the moment. So, I mean, if Ethereum was to die tomorrow, which I highly doubt it, the team could easily just do a token swap and nothing would change. So, if we go have a look here, circulating supply and, to uh, and total supply, <clears throat> which is definitely quite low, actually, in the crypto space. And just to confirm, these numbers are correct. And if we just jump over here to the uh, a token burn completed, because the team did actually burn some tokens. Uh, due to the ICO actually not selling out completely, some of the tokens in the token generation event were minted and they weren't supposed to be. And it kind of inflated the team to public supply a little bit. You know, So the team wanted to keep the company's supply at 33% or about there. So they actually burnt 10 million tokens, which is a lot considering the total supply now is only 14 million. So I will link this in the description, but if you just go through here, you know, it tells them about the burn, where they did it, and here you can see the transaction and stuff. Anyway, so those are the metrics. There we go. Circulating supply about 10 million, total supply about 14.6. This total supply will come to effect pretty soon when the, the full team tokens are released um, but we'll dive straight into the, the business paper where the tokenomics is outlined now basically the use of the utility token is a license to access the ecosystem so basically any developer enterprise user anyone who wants to use overledger whether that be via actually using a map or actually developing needs to have a a license and this license is in the form of Q&T tokens so this is all, all outlined here. It's quite brief here. However, I will go over to their utility uh, report that they've released recently that goes into a bit more detail. And also the business paper, you know, outlines the TGE and, you know, all the good ICO stuff. <clears throat> it also talks about um, the token sale terms, soft cap. I'm not going to go through all this because it's basically just number crunching. But the team actually didn't, didn't sell as much as they were hoping to in the token generation event. I think they raised about... 10 11 million us dollars in the ico and then here you've got you know fund allocations and stuff it is important to note here actually i will i will mention it because people have been asking me lately <clears throat> that there's uh if we go up to the team tokens which is here company 4.6 million it's actually split into two sections and so there is one section that is distributed between the founders, partners, staff members, advisors, and service fees, and they are subject to a 12-month holding period. However, over 50% of the company tokens are actually reserved for ecosystem and operational costs, and they've been unlocked since the token generation event. So just picture that, if we go back here, just picture, oh shit, wrong one, if we picture this 4.6 million split into roughly two sections, one for advisors and staff, which is still locked until April, and the other one that's open, and that's for operational costs, you know, uh, listings, funding the offices, spaces, and things like that. So if we actually move on to the Quant Utility Report, which was released recently, this one outlines in more detail how the fee structure works and stuff like that, and it is a work in progress. We'll just say that. It is a work in progress. They're looking for feedback, and they're really just trying to make it very, I will throw out some screenshots as we go from Telegram because there's a lot of um, really good juicy bits of information there from Gilbert. But they are really trying to make it frictionless for enterprise because as you know, an enterprise isn't going to want to sign up to Binance and buy your Q&T tokens, are they? Like, it's just, it's not reasonable, all right? But anyway, licensing fees. They will be fixed as a figure amount, right? So what does that mean? It doesn't mean that Q&T is fixed to a fiat amount. It means a license is fixed. So, for example, if um, if a license fee for a developer, they wanted to charge $10 per year, you know, all of these numbers I'm spitting out throughout this video, by the way, are all just completely random, for example. We don't know specific numbers yet. They'll be released with the treasury details. But let's say a developer needs to pay $10 
10 US dollars in annual licensing fees, right? That could equal one QNT token or it could equal a hundred. It doesn't matter, you know, it, it's that that changes depending on the market demand and supply and they mentioned that up here. <clears throat> By fixing the value of access pegged to a fiat price, it may be possible for a developer to only hold one QNT token or a fraction of a QNT as the price may fluctuate in comparison, right? So, developer, this is this is all really good stuff, so I will link this as well. Developers, you know, there's licensing fees, as we said. There's also consumption fees. So that basically means, you know, the more usage and the more users and stuff and more volume and read and write transactions going through the platform, you also need to pay for those in QNT. Now, also, in the Map Store, there's monetization. So if a developer chooses... To monetize their application, so let's say they have, oh, I don't know, they've got like an atomic swap map or something like that, and they want to charge people a dollar to use it. That monetization aspect doesn't have to be in QNT because it's not a license. You understand? That's actually that's a separate payment. So there's two types of payments. There's there's the licensing fees and the consumption fees, and those must must be going through QNT you know, the QNT token, and then there's monetization, and that's developers selling their their maps to other people on, on the ecosystem. And of course, you don't have to sell your map, you could list it for free. But as you say here, this can be charged in fiat or other digital currencies, so likely QNT will be there as well. Now, enterprises have a very similar very similar model, but the, uh, the license fees will be determined on number of users, number of employees, you know, type of application and volume. So of course, you're not going to have a developer paying $10 a year, a loan developer paying $10 a year, and a blooming international bank paying $10 a year. You know, it just doesn't work like that. So they've got all that, you know, thought about. As also, enterprises will have larger volumes, will be introducing different payment options, you know, pay as you go, pay in advance, unlimited usage, number of users. <clears throat> and we'll come back to this in a minute, but basically, I'm going to show you a diagram here that outlines the treasury function. Now, the treasury function has been talked about in the Telegram a lot, and I will throw up some screenshots here. I'm just going to stop talking for a second so I can show some up on the screen. But a lot of people will get confused about what the treasury function is, and is it team tokens, or what is it? So this, I've drawn up a little diagram here to help us all understand what happens and the processing for licensing. And again, this is just from my understanding from... Um, the AMAs, the, the information we have from Gilbert, this is my understanding of how the system works, right? So the treasury function, it is basically an intermediary. It provides a frictionless connection between people who are paying for their license in a fixed fiat price, you know, this is their user licensing, enterprise licensing, in a fixed fiat price, and then gets converted into tokens and transferred to the wallets, right? All seamlessly. So all this here, the guys don't have to do. So I'll show you what the team have come up with at the moment, actually. They have something similar to this. I assume this has actually been out for a few months, but it's pretty cool. It's just like a, a little plug-in to IDEX, and you can come straight to exchange.quant.network and, um, and buy quant. However, it's obviously going to be way more simpler than that in the treasury function because I, I'm assuming there'll just be a fiat balance and you just pay for your licensing, and then this function does all the back-end work. So let's work, let's walk through an example. <clears throat> let's say, and for this for this example, we'll ignore uh, volume fees and consumption fees as we talked about, because that'll be like a continuous continuous transaction and purchase, which may confuse you guys. So we'll just keep it nice and simple to start with. So let's say we're up here, we've just signed up to Overledger, and we've got to pay an annual license fee of let's say ten thousand US dollars, right? So you're starting up here, you're an enterprise sign up, you know, you've probably got like an app or something, you've got $10,000. You buy your license, right? Here, you buy your fixed fiat price license as determined by the team, you know, depending on employees, usage, etc. And that's determined to be $10,000 a year, right? So, you spend $10,000. What happens now? Well, as we determined, it's an annual license. So this $10,000 in fiat goes to the treasury function. Right, and again, this is just my interpretation. We are getting some more details on the treasury function in about a month or two, and that'll clear everything up. I'll release a new video about that, just going through the details. So this 10,000 US dollars, right? The enterprise has now paid their year's licensing. 
right? So they're, they're paid it. They're not exposed to any fluctuations throughout the year, right? Their license is paid. They don't care what the QNT token does throughout the year, you know, price-wise. That doesn't concern them. They've paid their 10K license. The treasury function converts that into tokens. Now you're thinking, how does it do it? Now there are a few options. Got to think logically about it. They go to an OTC broker, if it's a large one, you know, and an OT seller or a buyer uh, sells tokens. But you're also obviously thinking, well, where do these tokens come from? And of course, if an OTC broker runs out of tokens, they need to pick them up on exchanges, etc. Or it just plugs into a live exchange, similar to what we have here with IDEX, <clears throat> which is pretty cool. But regardless, this 10,000 US dollars is now buy demand for the token, right? That's what it is, it's buy demand. And so it picks up some tokens in the treasury function and it gets sent over here to the developer wallet or the map user wallet and it's locked up. <clears throat> now I will throw up a screenshot right here showing Gilbert talking about um, they've actually got a process in place that once these, to these licensing tokens are bought, they're actually locked up in a smart contract for the period of the license. So for this example, 10,000 US dollars per year, let's say Q&T is worth, I don't know, $10. Oh, that's a terrible drawing. Let's say it's worth $10, okay? At $10,000 worth of licensing and Q&T is $10, they need to buy what? A thousand tokens, right? So the treasury functions goes to the market, gets a thousand tokens, sends it to their wallet, and that's locked up for the year. The license is for a year, so it's locked up for a year. Now, what does that mean? Well, it actually technically means that any licensing bought is is taken out of circulating supply. Okay. Now, what's circulating supply? Circulating supply is just how many tokens are on the live market at the moment. You know, if you burnt, or let's say you put 10 million tokens in a wallet that can never be accessed because you burnt the private key or something like that, those those tokens aren't in the circulating supply because they can't be accessed. They can't be moved. It's efficiently burnt. So. We don't know the specifics on what happens to the tokens after the lockup period. We do know if we come back to here that um <clears throat> that they have to they have to renew the license. So here we go. The license key will expire annually and thus must be renewed using only QNT. So we don't know exactly how this will look, but let's say, let's use this example again, right? Let's say they've got uh, $10,000, so they buy in here, it's at $10, they've got 1,000 tokens, it's in their wallet and it's locked. But at the end of the year, what happens to those 1,000 tokens? Well, we're not sure yet. Gilbert has said that it, it might be absorbed back into the supply, but let's think about it like this. The uh, annual license is expired, and so now the enterprise must it starts over here again, right? And so they put another $10,000 in and buy more tokens. But let's say the price is now, I don't know, $15, right? So now they buy more tokens and they get locked up. Now you can imagine the effect this would have if there is lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of client demand, right? So let's say there were 10 or 100 enterprise users all trying to buy tokens, right? They're all going to the markets and if there's not enough people selling at these prices, it'll push the price up. But not only will it push the price up, it'll reduce selling pressure. And you ask me, how does it reduce selling pressure? Well, the tokens are locked up for the licensing period, aren't they? So let's say in the first month, there's a million tokens bought, right? A million tokens bought for licensing. For the next 12 months, those a million tokens are reduced. They're out of the supply. They can't be sold. So basically for a year, or forever how long the period is, it's like force hodling. These guys have bought tokens with dollars. It's, it's pushed the price up and it's, it's removed them from the supply, it's forced them not to sell, which is pretty huge. Because a lot of people were concerned about, oh, but if it's just a utility token, how does the price rise? Well, it comes down to supply versus demand. You know, if there is more demand, which is dollars, if there's more demand going through the system and less supply, supply being reduced in the lockup, then the price will rise. It's just, that's just how it is. It's it's economics. It's supply versus demand. Now, someone someone in the community <clears throat> actually did this diagram here, and I will link this. I won't go through it all, but it actually shows how this this model would work. And so you can see here in batch one, you know, as we were saying, a million token is taken out in open circulation. Now there's only eight point seven million, 
and let's say the uh, you know they go through the whole the pricing thing and how it's taken out and circulation slowly drops over time which is pretty huge <clears throat> I will link that but this is pretty exciting to me and so if you have any questions about the licensing system and the lockup feel free to ask but if we do jump over to the developer portal we'll see that there's actually 171 developers 25 maps registered and the Q&T balance for these developers in their wallets is already 1.65 million already so that actually means that I'll throw up another screenshot here because Gilbert was asked this in a, um, a quick little chat and telegram about it and he says it's just a glimpse it's just a glimpse of what's going to happen when the treasury system comes online because at the moment you know these a lot of these things are proof of concept and a lot of testing but still it's, it's pretty exciting to me to see that there's already technically 1.6 million taken out of supply <clears throat> now this is actually a, uh, a quant network uh, utility discussion <clears throat> a little document that just shows Gilbert coming into the telegram to have a chat and answer a few questions about the licensing it's actually a really good read and I will link it in the description as well I think you should just go through it it's only going to take you a minute or two but it does answer a lot of these questions <clears throat> now if we go back to the utility paper you might be thinking great so the token utility is for licensing but Luke what about some other uses great question now I will throw up <laughs> I keep saying I'm going to throw up telegram screenshots because I will there's some great info there there's a few screenshots and a few things about in the quants roadmap they're actually looking at doing like a decentralized exchange where Overledger is used to pull liquili uh, <coughs> liquidity, liquidity from other DEXs or perhaps even a map that facilitates atomic swaps. And so you might be thinking, okay, so Luke, so how does that work? So let's say you wanted to swap some Doge for some Verge or something like that, but there's not a lot of liquidity there or something like that. Quant token could actually, could actually work as a atomic swap intermediary value swap in between there you understand what I'm saying so it's like a liquidity pool or it could just use as transaction fees on, on a DEX but there are literally a gazillion different map options that the token could be used for and we also see that the team may be looking at may be looking at so this is definitely a, um, a work in progress here and they're looking at doing some gateways in the second half of this year but um, <clears throat> they want to overledger gateways to access multiple blockchain networks so basically there's going to be almost like masternodes but they're not really because it's basically providing users or enterprises the ability to host a quant network BPI or a gateway that you know facilitates transactions and volumes and stuff like that and to help facilitate here we go we're exploring the use of dual utility uh, tokenomics in order to earn revenue for the amount of volume used in hosted gateways so <clears throat> we don't really don't know this is about right here oh can't can't select it but this is about as much as we know about the gateways so don't speculate too much but it is definitely interesting that they're thinking about perhaps introducing something like this where you know there might be some collateral lockup you know 2,000 5,000 10,000 QNT 500 QNT I don't know just spitballing numbers and if you host a gateway, it allows people to um, allows people to pay you almost in mining fees or transaction fees for hosting the network and providing facilitation of the tra um, for the transactions. Anyway, that's that, guys. I hope that's a, a pretty good explanation of the Quant token and its utility and how it plays into the network. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm sorry for being a bit a bit late on this one. I've had a few busy weeks, you know, with exams and stuff. I'll, looking forward to doing the next episode not sure what it's going to be about yet most likely the ISO standard so stay tuned for that guys and uh, thanks for watching